Working on your car doesn't always go smoothly, so when I decided to upgrade my brakes on my 10 year old BMW, things didn't exactly go to plan. So, this time on Road & Race, my challenge is changing the brake hoses, brake pads and brake fluid on my M3. In the last episode, I went through the eight mods and customizations I've made to my M3 to make it my own since I'd got it. In this episode, as I'm going to track this car, I'm going to upgrade the brake pads as normal road brake pads will basically stop working after a few laps on the track. Whilst I'm there, the hoses are now 10 years old, so whilst probably still working just fine, for peace of mind, I'll swap them out for steel braided lines. I'll also pressure bleed the system with a race spec brake fluid to make sure the brake pedal stays nice and firm whilst on the track. Many of you will know I did the same thing when I got my Boxster and have step-by-step -step videos on how to do all of this, so I thought to myself, this will obviously be quite straightforward on the M3. It'll take me one day, max. Hmm, didn't really pan out like that. So, up early on day one and I was immediately faced with my first unforeseen problem, stuck wheel bolts. As most of you probably all know, the manufacturer of any car will always specify a maximum tightness bolt should be tightened to, a torque setting, if you will. This stops you damaging the nut through over tightening, but also makes it easier to get off. I've never had a problem getting wheel bolts off with my long breaker bar, but these bolts were stuck tight. What I imagine had happened was that the last car mechanic who worked on the car was being lazy, and instead of going to the effort of looking up the correct torque settings, then getting out a torque wrench to tighten each nut by hand, he simply got his impact driver and spun them on as tight as possible. In this example, the bolt should be tightened to 120 newton meters, but I had to put my entire body weight on the bar to shift one. By my calculations, that's over 417 newton meters. So I was able to get all the bolts off, but shortly after my right hand started aching. A lot. All that force through the palm of my hand on a thin bar had injured me. People who watch my vlog will know this already, but I ended up not being able to use my hand properly after this for about a week. Anyway, so after jacking up the car, I tried to pull the wheel off. Uh, no. It too was stuck tight. This situation is known as galvanic corrosion. When two different metals are placed in contact with each other and then they get wet, they will corrode and basically stick together. I've encountered this situation before, so I thought, no problem. Just a few kicks should loosen it right up. Hmm, no, right. Hold on, I've got another idea. As you can see, my usual techniques didn't work. As it was now lunchtime, I went and had a cup of tea and some food. Then I had an idea. I put the wheel bolts back on, but only hand tightened them. Then... That worked a treat. Wheels came straight off after. To stop this situation happening again, I put some copper grease on the wheel hub. So, let's get the brake calipers off. They are held on with two bolts with a 7mm hex head. Now, the thing I like about my Halford's 200 piece socket set is that although it was quite expensive at about £150 to buy, it has everything. I've never been without the right socket or adapter. So, I'll just pick out the 7mm... Ah, uh, no 7. Right. And on that note, I called it a day. The next day starts with a visit to the shops to purchase a couple of items. The first was an impact driver from Makita. I've had a Makita drill for many years and always liked their build quality. And since I have the battery already that works on this device, I can just simply buy the body and save about £100. The other item was a 7mm hex socket. Have to confess, I've never used an impact driver before, but using one is hugely satisfying. It just effortlessly rips through over tightened bolts. It's lovely. I love it. I highly recommend one. Anyway, after making sure I could get all the wheel bolts off, I hand tightened them back up and put the rear of the car on ramps. 
My top tip when planning to remove brake lines is to wedge the brake pedal down as this massively reduces the amount of brake fluid that comes out. Unlike the Boxster, which I had before that had four brake hoses, the M3 has six, one for each wheel, plus two under the car that connects the rear hard lines together. Many years ago, I replaced the brake hoses on my old BMW 320D, and I sheared the brake lines trying to get them off. So starting at the rear of the car is good practice, as the hard lines there are quite short and cheap and easy to replace if you do break any of them. I thought it was all going well as I couldn't see the line twisting as I undid the nut, but it turns out I was, and the line sheared. I had a go at the other one and did the same thing. I now need to buy new hard lines for the rear of the car. Afterwards, I was able to take a closer look. As you can see here, the brake line nut doesn't move freely around like it should and will twist the brake line. Annoyingly, you can't unscrew from the hose end as it's got four notches that slot into the bracket so it stops it turning. Frustrated and tired, I went in for lunch and did a bit of research. It turns out the secret technique is to completely bend this retaining clip out of the way so you can move the whole assembly down. Then you can hold the brake line nut still and unscrew from the hose end. Next it was off to my local BMW parts department for new hard lines and new retaining clips. And as the car was in bits now, it meant ordering a taxi. It had been a long, frustrating day, so you can see here I was a little grumpy by this stage. Also, the taxi smelt of sick, so that didn't help either. Luckily, these parts are cheap, so I returned home in good spirits. With the car still on ramps, it was time to fit the new brake hard lines. Here you'll see me connecting them to the old brake hoses. This is because they need to be disconnected from the passenger rear wheel well, and because the car is currently on ramps, I'll come back to that one last. After putting the car on stands and removing the wheels, it was time to change the brake pads. What surprised me is that unlike the Boxster, which used a four piston caliper, BMW have stuck with a single piston design. It's a big piston, slightly enlarged from a standard BMW 3 Series, I think, as the brake pads are larger, but still, I would have thought a performance car like this would demand a brake caliper with more pistons. Anyway, I guess BMW's M division know what they're doing, so I'll find out on the track soon enough. I'm not a big fan of BMW's brake caliper design. On the Boxster, the Brembo calipers made it relatively easy to swap brake pads out. Just remove the clip, pin and sensor cable and the pad just pulls out. On the M3, the whole caliper has to come off, which means removing this retaining clip, the brake pad wear sensor, these two caps that protect the slime bolts from the weather, and the two slide bolts themselves. They've got a 7mm hex head, don't you know? It's a heavy caliper and you'll have to support it on something to change the pads if you're not replacing the hoses at the same time, like me. Here are the two slide bolts removed. As the caliper slides back and forth on these, it's best to keep them well lubricated. Luckily, I have brake grease left over from the rebuild of my Porsche brake calipers. So here's the shot of the brakes with the new pads and brake lines fitted. I've also pressure bled the system by this stage. If you want full step-by-step -step guides for these, I've done them for my Boxster and the process is very similar. So now that I've had a chance to bed in the pads, how does the upgraded brakes perform on the track? Well, I'm pleased to report that my fears over the single piston calipers were unnecessary. They do an excellent job of stopping the car. Pair that with the Paget RSL brake pads and I was able to do 15 minute stints at the Abingdon airfield without any fade at all. That's quite an achievement as Abingdon is a very brake heavy track. For a bit of fun I measured the heat coming off the discs after a stint and they were still over 500 degrees centigrade. So that's very impressive for the brake pads. Next time on Road and Race, I go through some of my favorite features you might not know about on the M3. If you've enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing and clicking the like button as it really helps me be able to make more shows. Click the video in the top right of the screen to watch the next episode in this series, or the one in the bottom right to watch from the start of this series. And as always, thank you for watching.